welcome to the treasured page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space. Today I want to look at how to include aromatherapy to our journaling projects, building in fun texture and wonderful scented faux rice papers to work with. I'd like to look at napkins. In the UK we have two sizes of napkin. You can see the difference there. We call this a lunch napkin and this a cocktail napkin and um, I'm going to be using the smaller size today for no other reason than I prefer the pattern on it for, with the butterflies and we used this last time. So if you wanted to see what I did with the napkin here in my uh, beginner's guide, have a look in my playlist and you'll find this and this comes under the aromatherapy journal section. And this is carrying on from that. So we are going to be using aromatherapy oil in this project. Okay, so you're going to need a napkin, a paintbrush, some glue, water-based, non-toxic, washable, the sort of stuff that you would give to children. Hope that doesn't explode. And um, a little dish to put your glue in. What else might we need? Uh, I think that's everything. Okay, so we just need the glue, a paintbrush and the napkin. Now to cover your desk, you're going to need a sheet of plastic. So this could be a bin bag, a plastic bag, uh, if you've got a, um, a plastic carrier bag that you can cut out so that you've got a portion of it here. This was quite useful, it came from some packaging, I think it had a cushion or something wrapped in it and I kept it from a while ago when we had a delivery. We jump straight in with a nice squirt. Now this could be the white Elmer's glue, you could use that as well, white glue, PVA glue. Elmer's glue, washable glue, well as long as it's washable, non-toxic and the sort of stuff that we give to children, this is fine for what we're doing here because it dries fairly quickly and gives a bit of a plasticky coating. So that's what we're aiming for. I'm using a citrus uh, essential oil and I'm putting in, well that was four drops to a small amount of glue there. Smells delicious already. Thinking about it, we might want a drop more. There we go, maybe a tablespoon of glue there. And just uh, an old paintbrush. Give it a little mix. And that essential oil smells of shooting up at me and uh, making the whole experience more relaxing and calming in our quiet crafting space. Oh, that's lovely. That is lovely. So I've used again my grapefruit. It's supposed to uh, make you more productive and clear your mind and all of that. I know it's in glue and it all sounds a bit weird so definitely uh, don't do it unless you feel comfortable but um, it certainly brought a new element to my crafting world. Now this is another little idea because you need to separate the napkins, There's, I think these are three ply, we'll find out, but a little trick here is to use your bone folder and just wipe or push down gently over the corner like that and that releases these little dimples that you get on all corners of the napkin. If you can see there that has now separated that without any bother or any need of plastic tape you just smooth and flatten those dimples and then it releases them you've still got to pull them over but it gives you a starting point to be able to pull it apart like that and there we are so that's the top layer let me see i think these are just two ply see that gives me a nice second image i think they're still feels thick let's have another go so we just rub on the corner there just gently oh yeah three ply no like normal and then we've got the two I'll leave that but we'll do something else with that we're wanting the pattern top I think today put some glue down on here now this is um, an old technique um, I've seen Artie Mays use something similar I've seen Natasha from Treasure Books use something similar and I have learned to do this when I was a teenager at art college so it is an old technique 
Um, there we are, I've accredited two <laughs> crafters uh, who use this sort of a method, but um, adding the essential oil I haven't seen before. I think that might be my own work, <laughs> my own bonkers crazy take on things, but I certainly just feel that it is a lovely, nice, relaxing way to add extra sensory delight to the craft room and, uh, and to the project because this will take on the scent of the essential oils and therefore you will have a scented product when you've finished to go in your journal or, or whatever this turns out to become. Um, so I've stuck it down on one side and now I'm coming over on the top with the glue which will soak through as well. So it would be very careful not to dab too hard um, and rip it so it is a gentle it's not really one for doing super quickly and if it gets all crinkled up that's so much the better because that just builds in a lovely texture and uh, looks like the faux rice paper which I think is what Natasha from Treasure Books was trying to show us in her video so I think with um, ideas in the junk journaling community we, we just sort of serve them up like tennis and we bat them over to other crafters who pick them up, alter the idea slightly with their own spin on it and we serve it back out again to you crafters to see what you can come up with. And it's just fantastic to see how creativity has this wonderful butterfly ripple effect around the world as we all come up with our own take on an idea and it's hugely important to share that um, to help everybody and I do think that that's really lovely so if you can share the things that you make using the ideas that you've gleaned from my videos then that only encourages me further to feel like I want to create more to help others around the world because I'm I can see where my my videos reach and they are worldwide um, so if you're finding this of interest right now hit the subscribe button and, and let me know that this is worth my time and effort I'm not making money or anything out of this, it's just purely giving back what I feel is a worthwhile uh, exercise to help people to relax and uh, calm down in their own quiet crafting space and uh, just connect with others over creativity and art and crafts and joy and friendship so yeah be a good friend give me a subscribe and let me know that this is all worth the effort otherwise youtube just doesn't show my videos to people because it doesn't think that you you like it and i know there's a lot of people that watch it but don't subscribe so if you don't know how to do that perhaps leave a comment and i can help i have got a little rip there but don't think that matters because we can always craft our way out of that somehow can't we so I'm going to leave this to dry and I'll just um, hold that up as best I can for you now so you can see little crinkles in there will become part of the project and uh, give this a really wonderful texture. I'm all about texture, I absolutely love that. And while that's drying I've just realised I have got quite a bit of glue left so I thought I'd just do another one. I've cut myself another sheet of plastic off of the big sheet that I got from whatever packaging that was. You can see it's just it's just the wrapper that went round some furniture or cushion or something or other. I can't remember but these things I keep. Um, so that's where I squashed down those dimples and it allowed me to just pull that off. 
could do that again. I wonder if I can get two, just about get two on here, get the idea. So you're just making a square of glue <coughs> covering the plastic for the undercoat, if you like. Just going to put that down there, put that right on the edge. And um, using up what's left of this glue. So I just make sure I've got a good coverage under here so that it will stick. But it's definitely need to make sure you've got the glue underneath so it sort of automatically gets stuck down before you start pulling it about on the top. Okay, so we've learnt that. Make sure it's fully stuck down because I'm rushing. And then that's okay, that's brilliant that I'm making mistakes because then you don't have to, you can see what you need to do. So you need to make sure you've got full coverage underneath first, you put your tissue on the top and you go over with the glue again. And if you put a little spritz of water into your, into your uh, project, let's just do that now. Little spritz of water in there and a uh, quick mix up make it a little bit more runny but it, it really does depend on what glue you have if yours is already runny oh that's better <laughs> we learn don't we we learn as we go and that's part of the fun it's making it up right what what are we going to put in here then so we could have some we could have some petals let me get some petals that sounds nice okay so i've got some rose petals here now these will start to react with water if I'm not careful and create a grotty brown colour. <laughs> so hopefully the drying time, just shred and sprinkle, shred and sprinkle and then move about. If you have allergies of any description, sensitive skin, uh, don't touch your glue. If you've added a citrus, you'll be fine if it's a sweet orange, you'll be fine if it's a lavender, anything that you can give to a child in aromatherapy massage for a baby, you should be fine with. But uh, if you have something like that and you know about it, you either use gloves or you use your paintbrush so you don't get involved with it. And um, you just be careful. I'm using natural aromatherapy. I'm, I'm not using a synthetic one. Um, it is all totally uh, the essential oil from the botanical plant, uh, which is more beneficial for you as you craft. Okay, let's put the top layer on. So we're just doing the same again because we've already got the glue on the underside. So again, we'll just be careful not to drag the project. It's quite good if you're coming to the end of a glue bottle and um, maybe the glue's going a bit gunky. This is quite a good project to use up the glue. Water it down and then that will go further. Pop in a couple of drops of that. I think that was three actually. But it's so beautiful. And it just adds such a lovely element. And then if you're putting this into your journals, particularly if you're, you've got a lot of um, you know, papers where you've used coffee, and they can become, you know, they take, they have a smell, don't they? Coffee papers can get a smell over time if you don't do it right or you use too much. Um, you can double wash your papers to try and get rid of that smell. So once you've washed them, dried them, you can then dunk them again and wash them. But who's got time for that? Um, so there, there's a number of ways of reducing this the coffee smell. Um, I store my papers with tumble dryer sheets. Uh, so they smell like linen because I think the paper takes on the smell of what's around it. Uh, so if paper has been stored over time in a bit of a musty dusty place it's gonna smell musty dusty over time um, but if it's been stored in a dry clean environment with tumble dryer sheets that smell of a fresh morning spring <laughs> um, 
a day uh, in, in in a nice laundry smell then they'll take on that as well and there you can see I've covered over the whole lot with the with the top layer of glue it's trapped in the little pieces of rose petal which I dried from my garden last year and I uh, just keep them you know if you get any flowers given to you over Mother's Day or a birthday or somebody's done something wonderful or even you have your own growing in the garden when they come out um, save a few blooms dry them on the side and then you can use the leftover flower petals in projects throughout the year it's just another little uh, junk resource that you can keep to one side the other thing I've got here is a very old um, vintage or probably antique um, dictionary it's a Spanish English dictionary yeah look that's all coming out so I'm just going to add one of these because the paper's really thin I've already just put the glue down interesting idea there just to strengthen up some of these old papers which are absolutely beautiful yeah I just wonder what I can do with this now if I put another layer of glue over the top of this what if I put now um, a bird or an image just got some old labels I think that's really going to work or maybe Maybe a shell. Let's just go with this idea, see where this takes me. So we're just adding fussy cuts here, fussy cut elements here. You know when you have the idea and then you're not prepared for it, it's just the creativity is just taking you places, it's taking me there. I've got this. Oh, I never know what to do with this. How about that? Is that too big? Well, I think we could get away with that if we come down ever such a fraction. I like the number at the top of that page, 77. So, let's get the paintbrush oh wow well this is quite a good idea I know it's decoupage but it's nothing new but what if we then oh I need another one hang on let's uh, let's just go with this fly how about that let's add that and then That one looks quite nice. Bird boxes. And pop that there. Just glue down over the top of all of this. Okay, I, I don't really know, but this is just a, an experiment of an idea here. So we glue all of that to, together. I like that one very much because that was really, I really went uh, and cut that out in a very fussy way. Whereas these, these look less, you know, they're not very good, but that one is really well cut out. So I've, I'm not bothered about that. Now what I want to do is get some tissue paper. Tear a bit off. I just have an idea to cover it up. See if we can do something like that to cover that one up. I don't think. Just little ideas. Just having a little play. Because if you don't play, you never learn, and you're always wondering what everybody else is doing 
So nothing to stop you sitting there having a little go, creating your own ideas. So I'm doing a layered look there, see if that makes any difference. It's quite nice where it's overlapped. Okay, I will go and leave this to dry and report back on what happened here. In my quiet craft and craft session all by myself, having a wonderful time. Okay, let's see what that does and we'll meet you back here when it's all dry. Okay, welcome back. I just wanted to show you um, what we've got. Now, I have left this for ooh, about three hours I suppose um, it's taking an age to dry because it is on plastic so it's only getting the surface uh, meeting the warmth of the house now the other thing is these pieces here are double thickness because I've put the tissue paper over the top I've also got some paper here um, but it is releasing from the back there so I, and there is a shiny element to it. Actually, that feels a mm, little bit damp. Um, they're still in places where, where it is, but, but it's exciting. It does look really cool. I think I can cut that bit. I'll be able to sort of tear elements out, which I think is really, really interesting. And I think when this dries, I absolutely love that. And um, so that one's okay. This one hasn't released because it's still wet. It's dry there. I'm loving the way it looks. It's satisfying to peel it off the plastic. <laughs> and uh, okay, oh, okay. So, ooh. so it's a little bit wet there. I don't know why it's so damp on that edge. Perhaps I had more glue there. So just got to be a bit careful. Yes, so that may be able to just get that with a heat gun, but I don't want to melt the plastic behind. If I could release it off of the plastic, that would at least allow the air to get to the back. Oh, hang on, I think I've got it. Just go carefully. Yep, that did it. There we go. Well, that's going to be really exciting. So it's still sticky on that one edge. I'll probably, well, I'll probably take, oh no, okay, don't do what I do, leave it to, <laughs> leave it alone, don't touch it, I can't, I have to fiddle, I've put a hole in it now, oh dear, well there we go, anyway, you can see the texture, it's really, really good. And I think that'll be quite strong when it dries. But I think it'll probably have more chance now or off of the plastic because it'll have the surface area on both sides. We'll be able to get get the dry. Anyway, heating's coming on now because it's coming to the end of the day. So I'm just going to leave it over there by the, by the heater. Now, the other one. Oh, just come with me. Go up there on the... Right, now this one is thinner, whereas the others were too double thickness and it has just completely peeled away. So there we go, it's fine, didn't even have to do anything. There we are. Very thin, it's got a strength to it now. Shiny on that side where the glue has just been resting on the plastic sheet. I had the idea to fold them up on themselves to make pockets but I'm now not liking the fact that I can see the butterflies through on the white bit there so I think I'll have to come up with some other idea of that can you hear it's got a flower with a nice crackly feel so that's the two pieces of napkin sandwiched together so this is just one very small Cocktail napkin has created what I will use as collage paper and um, 
tearing paper to decorate things this is awesome i suspect it rips quite nicely yes it does oh that's lovely so um i'm going to make some things in my next video using these things and then i've got this as well but i just can't leave this and i'm really wanting to cut them apart just to see what i've got sometimes when things are all linked together you can't see the wood for the trees if you know what i mean you just need to perhaps i'll be better off ripping that no nope. oh yeah it does rip but that's quite a nice edge right so just to explain what's happened here this was a digital kit image and the ink in my printer was starting to run out so I, wa I wasn't getting a true colour I was getting more of a green colour so it looked a bit washed out and vintage anyway when it came out I fussy cut it really really well so you can't see the white edge like you can see here but there was no way I was going to sit there trying to fussy cut around that oak leaf um, so I, I don't like that, that's not as good. But this is this is very good where you can't see the white and that has just really stuck in. I don't know if you can see the detail there, but it's it's really gone wibbly wobbly on the paper, which is awesome. Um, I can tear this away so that I separate it away because I really like this one with a flower on it. So there, I think they're irises. Um, I could iron that but then I love that texture so I'm just going to smooth that out so it doesn't curl and that I think is just a really nice standalone piece so sometimes you just get these one things that, that you're really happy with and other things you're not you know that I, w I would say that that's not a composition so it doesn't work but to tear that off that's interesting i could now put a label or something up there or now a bird closer together with it or even cut that out a bit better and do something there but uh, that's an element that i that i approve of i approve of that that's met my approval <laughs> i like it so therefore it can stay i like that and i like that now uh, just to say, the ink bled through when I put the wet glue on, so the printer ink has leaked off, spread out. I don't mind it. It's grungy. Uh, all it wants now is some ink around the edges. That's that's the start of maybe a little booklet, a pocket. You know, that's that's cool. We like that. I could sew round it. That's going places. This one has really discoloured um, from the printer ink that's bled through as it's got wet. So that hasn't worked. This one isn't because it's a book page and that works better. And that one does as well. But if they were better fussy cut out images, that would be great. I could probably cut that out, but what have I gained? I've just gained some funny surface, which... I've overlapped it there just to see what that would look like but the texture's not there enough so that's not very interesting whereas that is more interesting I've got a crinkle going across there and there's something about that one so sometimes it's going to work and sometimes it's not but um, I will cut the bird out it will get used somewhere but as a standalone piece I don't know what do you think I could cut out Maybe I could go inking over it. Hmm, more things needed on those. They're not shouting out as I'm not getting excited about them, put it that way. So therefore, uh, I don't know if I want to continue with that. <laughs> um, but this one, I really like that. The colour hasn't bled. We've got interesting crinkles going across it. And to tear round and leaving some book page, that would be brilliant for the shell. Again, with the white background, not so much. So that one's okay. So I'm going to tear this bird away. Oh, see, he instantly looks better. And funny because I've got cat there. So, okay, I could do something with that. So 
so yes to tear them away from the other sometimes just gives you more inspiration or more of an insight of where you could take it when it's taken away from the other thing I think that makes sense so that looks good use this as decorating elements for the for this as a background so there we go I'm pleased that I've done that and I'm pleased that I've shown you what could go wrong and how you can overcome it and um, some extra things as well just to let you know they smell amazing the scent has stayed within the drying process um, I wouldn't think I wouldn't expect that it would last and last and last but it's certainly a pleasant way of working and uh, particularly if you don't like glue not that those glues smell those children's glues they don't really have a smell to them um, but just to add to your journal particularly if you're doing um, a botanical journal and you've got things it's just quite nice to bring the senses to the journal and uh, mask down any coffee stained paper smells so it's worth having a go and it just brings a little bit more fun to your craft room session and that's what it's all about it's just slowing down having fun making time for you so above all else guys thanks for watching and uh, please like and subscribe slow down and make crafting time for you bye bye now